This is the first time I ever told anyone in an interview, but that hat that I first dropped, the NY Bomber, it was supposed to go to a store right here in LES. And I was telling the owner, I'm like, yo, this is the new wave, high end fashion is in, let's fuse it with streetwear. Threw me on the back burner, you know what I'm saying? Had me waiting for about four months. He was like, eh, it's just whatever. So I'm like, all right, bet. I took it to another spot uptown, another store that I used to fuck with. I'm like, yo, let's do this. Same thing. It's like, I don't think that that's going to work. You know, a lot of people are like, eh, I don't want to put money into that. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it on my own. Did the samples, like I said. Then I got the calls back. Yo, let's mass produce this. You know, I want to throw my logo on there. Curve all that shit. Because it's like, yo, if you're not working with me, then you want to work with me after success, there's no point in even hollering at me. It's like, like, you don't want no new friends. You don't even want to quote Drake. <laughs> you don't want no new friends. What's going on, 40 ounce van? From the Bronx, New York. You know, currently residing in Westchester. I live in New Rochelle now. You know, but uptown's a stomping grounds. That's where I grew up at. That's where, that's where bred me. You know, I'm born and raised New Yorker. And other than the snapbacks, I got the tumbler out. You know, everybody know me for the tumbler as well. That was my first, I guess you say, milestone when I hit that million views on there. And then came the hat snacks. But before that, I was doing the, the 40 ounce bounce. You might know me from that too. The 40 ounce bounce started in 2009. It was, um, Actually, my girlfriend's idea. She like, throw a barbecue. We invited like 40 people that came out. Yeah, everybody would compliment you, 40 ounces. And then from there, it's like, I want to do it again. Can we do it again? Then we do it again. And it got to the point where it's like 5,000 kids came out. And it actually turned into like a real event versus just a barbecue for the homies. Uh, I came out of pocket. I'm a partner Maxwell. I'm um, Hoffa. Like, we all pitched in. It was like, like the way I like to move is like to move in groups, you know, it's a lot easier to work like that. I'm not antisocial. And so I, I find things to be a lot better when, when you got a team with you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, I'm actually revamping it. Like I'm bringing it back. I'm trying to I'm trying to do the 40 ounce bounce for this summer, 2013. But I'm trying to do it the right way. You know, I'm, I'm trying to go legit with it. Get the sponsors, you know, get the permits and everything so I won't get shut down and get, have anyone disappointed. From the Bronx, my whole life. You know, born and raised in New York. You know, like my homegirl Tanil, she, she she got a quote in one of her songs. It's like, um, you flew here, we grew here. So it's like, born and raised. What high school did you go to? Oh, uh, New York High School. Mm -hmm. I went to college, I did a semester. You know, it wasn't for me, you know. <laughs> it's like I found that out the hard way and messed with some money and that, but, you know, everything rotates back around. What was your degree? Like, yeah. Business. Mm -hmm. I was running for business. Oh, uh, my parents, middle, I came from a middle class family. You know, my mother was a housewife, my father's a carpenter. So it's like all that fashion stuff I learned in the streets, you know, being downtown and absorbing things from downtown, bringing it uptown. It's like you got to play both sides. You can't just be strictly downtown or strictly uptown because then you get lost in the mix. Oh, I mean, I've always been fly. <laughs> Never get a twist. I've always been fly. Fashion came with just like with the culture, you know, we adapt with the times. You know, we went from wearing Iceberg to Alexander Wang. So, so you just got to adapt. Oh, Banana Republic. Hated that shit. <laughs> I used to work stock there. I was a stock manager for a little bit. And it was whack because, you know, the hours suck. You know, nobody really likes working retail. And then it's like, I, I got to deal with women all day, too. So it's just like clothes, women, Soho, overnight shifts. Like, shit, it's just motivation to never do that again. <laughs> nah, my first, my first job was at 13. I was a waiter. At this country club, you know, I started off as a busboy and turned to a waiter. So I've always been grinding. Nah, the reason I went to Banana Republic was actually like an alley oop from a homegirl. I was looking for a job at the time. She's like, yo, work stock here, it's low key. You downstairs, you don't really gotta mingle with everybody. But then it got to the point where it's like, you gotta run stuff upstairs. You know, the sizes is funny. It's like, it became a headache. So like, I quit that and started doing my own thing. Uh, the top, when I had to quit, it was, the main reason I quit was those overnight shifts. No, I didn't really like being from work from 11 p.m. to like 6 a.m. If I'm getting like 13 miles an hour, that shit whack, you know what I'm saying? So when I left there, I was kind of lost. I didn't know what I was going to do. So then I was just mixing around, hitting like every scene. The showing face, mingling with everybody, connecting these dots. And it got to the point where it's like I got all these resources in front of me. You know, all the homies is actually doing something. So it was my turn to plug myself in and see what I could do for them versus what they could do for me. It's about to be a year that I've been doing hats, actually in May, it's my one year anniversary. But before that, I was doing t-shirts. You know, when Prodigy first came home, I did the Hennessy t-shirt with him. Then my first collaboration with Deadline. So it's like, I've always wanted to wear my own shit. And then it's like, I got, 
I could pump it out in the streets, hand out pieces for free, and see if the streets fuck with it. I mean, that's what I do with the hats. It's like, did a little test run, see if everybody liked it or not. And once I seen that, I mean, once the streets fuck with you, you, you straight from there. Like, you could, you could make something with it. The first time I noticed that the hats were catching on is when, let's see, Victor Cruz hit me. Victor Cruz is like, yo, I need that shit. So I'm like, all right, bet. I gave it to him. And it just blew up after that. Then came the Kendrick and came like everybody else. You know, the list goes on. But it's just like, I hit the homies first. They rep for the homie. So it was more like a local thing at first. Yeah, I mean, I started off with, I did, I did 10 samples. I had 10 samples. Three was to like the homies. The other ones I just sort of stopped. And then from there, it's just like, all right, I got to run with it or just fall back. You know, there's only two choices. And I didn't want to be the lazy one and just be like, damn, I could have done that. I could have done this. I just took a gamble, invested some bread, started manufacturing more pieces. And then I was like, yo, it's just a business at the end of the day. Just got to run with it. It's not easy being 40 ounce, man, to tell you the truth. I mean, I've done a lot in the last year, but there's a lot of behind the scenes shit where it's like hats aren't made on time. You know, I got to bark on employees. You know, I lost a lot of friends over bread, too. Cause you know, everybody thinks they're entitled to things just because you're coming up. So it's like, there's, there's a lot of headaches, but at the end of the day, I look at it, I try to look for the, towards the future and be like, yo, if I knock all this shit out now, I'm 26 years old by the time I'm like 30, 31, 32, I'm trying to retire, invest all this money and just keep investing. Yo, starting a business is not easy, especially not going to school for it. You know, I did that one semester and then I ran what I absorbed from there. And I think the most... Everything that I've, le I've been learning in the past year has been through experience. You know, if it's not experience, I'm picking up books and bars and nobles and trying to figure out what these other entrepreneurs are doing and what these Fortune 500 companies are just running with. Just try to master that and then bringing in like the street culture and the shit that I learned off the street and just fusing it all together. Marketing, that's, that's the best thing I learned from, from that, once, that full year I did over there. It's like, it's marketing tactics. And then I just figured out like how to, it's everything's like a chess game, man. You got to move the pieces the right way. And then, I mean, you might take the L one or two times, but then you got the other pieces that you can fuck with and then take over, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you got a winning streak, you're always going to have that downtime, but don't ever get discouraged and think you're not going to hop back on top, you know what I'm saying? Do you have it's nah. like schools? Nah, it's... It's not from the bottom, I mean, that shit makes sense. But, you know, I, I really don't like to use the word success, man, because it's like I want to hit 50 M's, and then I'd be like, damn, I'm successful. I'm still grinding, you know? I don't really just say I don't like to say that I'm a, I came up because that's when you start getting lazy and all that. But I'm still on the come up, I'm still hungry. But I mean, I got all this knowledge. I be tweeting that shit all day. You know, people see it, people think it's it's not serious. Some people really take it to heart and just run without what I tweet. But I think like you could learn a lot from not. I mean, you could pay the tuition. I'm not discouraging people not going to college, but you could learn a lot from other people's mistakes and other people that are doing what you want to do. Like if you want to be business person or you want to be a business owner it's a lot easier to figure out how to do with taxes you know there's loopholes for taxes they don't teach you that shit in school you know if you want to go get a attorney you're not just going to go on the yellow pages find an attorney it's like everything is just knowing, knowing someone that knows someone that knows someone that knows someone i'm not really a big fan of college <laughs> you know i mean my sister's going to columbia she's going to be a fucking corporate lawyer so i mean if you're going to do shit like that you got to go to college but if you're going to start your you can cop an LLC for like $700, $500, you know, brand your name, go to the garment district. You know I mean, if, there's a lot of ways to start a business in fashion. But if you really trying to take it to the next level and be a lawyer or a doctor, then I suggest you go to school. Oh, people fuck with 40 ounce vans because I'm, I'm, I'm so accessible in New York. You know, it's like I'm not the guy behind the computer that's dropping these gems and I'm not in the street shaking hands. You know, I'm always in the street shaking hands. You can always see me Monday through Sunday out here. Whether it be uptown, downtown, I mean, around your town, I'm everywhere. So it's like, if you could talk to someone, if you could shake their hand, if you could have a decent conversation with them, the street's going to fuck with you. Um, balancing it with high-end fashion. I mean, since I started doing the, the first Balmain inspired snapback was based off Balmain Paris. You know, I mean, like I said before, we went from iceberg to shit we're wearing now. Like, I got $1,500 sneakers on, but that shit don't mean I'm not from the hood. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... Balancing what's in and what's not in is, is the key to success and just keeping an eye out on what next season is, season after that. It's like, you just got to pay attention to your surroundings. I mean, that's, that's basic science for just living. I see the internet as this, like, big cash cow, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to know how to milk it because there's money sitting there. Like, you, like I said, if you got, like, 50,000 followers and you're just on there tweeting jokes or just... 
doing a whole bunch of nothing, and it's like, why even, why even use that as a method of, of communicating with people? You know, when you got the internet, you can put anything out. You can put anything you want out, from Instagram to Cinemagram to anything. Anything is possible over the internet. Yeah, I mean, the Tumblr started off as, it was just for fun. I mean, all the shit I've done has just been for fun. The barbecues to the hats to the Tumblr. But then it's like, the way I see things is that if I see an opportunity, I'm going to run with it. So I started off the Tumblr, had the contribution link on there, just told all the homies about it, and then just went everywhere, from fucking fashion houses to, to Def Jam to Atlantic. I mean, it spread around. So, you know, once the big homies give that, that green light, it trickles down to everybody else. So then now I use it as my, as my marketing tactic. When you go on there to see a certain thing, then you'll see a hat or you see another product. It's, like, it's, it's, it's a subliminal marketing tactic. I mean, I started off with like 15 pictures. So then I put the contribution link on top. I'm gonna wait for that shit to pass, and man. Oh, fuck that. So I started off with, with about 15 pictures, and then from there, I didn't get discouraged. I'm like, yo, what am I gonna do next? So I just started doing, I still did my thing, get the girls sent pictures in. Contribution link started bubbling. And then, and then I passed that shit on I, to everyone internationally. And, you know, I'm like, yo, tell the homies, tell the homies. So I had the flag kind of on there, and then I started seeing more flags come on there, more flags coming to, excuse me, to now I'm about to hit like, I think 11 million views on that. Yeah, and it's free. That's why, that's why I say, yo, use the internet to your advantage, because it's free. If you don't have to pay monthly subscription, then you shouldn't be tripping about not making money. At the end of the day, everyone's not going to like what you do. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have that percentage of people that's going to be like, nah, I don't fuck with him. I think it's whack. I think it's clean. It's like, the way I see it is, I don't care about two, three hundred people don't fuck with me. If I got like 70,000 people that do fuck me, it's like, it's whatever. Let the, let the rest fizzle out. No, I mean, I got my own opinions as well, so I respect other people's opinions too. You don't really have to like the hat. I mean, I don't like other people's clothes as well, so it's like, you got that mutual respect. To that. What motivates me to continue doing what I'm doing is... is seeing that snowball effect, you know, it's like, I start off as that little snowball and I'm rolling down that hill and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger so I want to see how big I can get. So like, I want to see, I want to want to roll that hill till I get a motherfucking glacier, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to block something. So it's like, I want to just see how far I can go. Cause memory, it's a blessing to have rappers fuck with my hat. It's like, I mean, I grew up on rap, I grew up on hip hop, you know, from the core megas to the AZs, to like the Popone on Yeagers, to the big L's. I mean, that's what I grew up on to seeing the future fuck with me is just ill. You know, for Kendrick to throw that hat on and rep it through like 50 shows, it's just love. You know, I didn't even meet the nigga. He, he heard about me through the homie in LA, like the hat, cause you know, he rap LA like I rap NY. And for when he came to New York, we finally connected. It was just like, nigga was his family. You know, Dave, all of them is his family. The Funk Flex mixtape was just, that was just one of the biggest comments that I've ever done, cause I always wanted to be on the mixtape, but I don't rap. So I had to figure out how I was going to get on there. And then Flex hit me on Twitter. He's like, yo, man, I need you for this. And then I followed through. You know, the, the homie Juanito. Juanito was coaching me. Laura Styles as well. I was like, it's not easy getting behind that mic and talking on that shit. So I was over there recording for like an hour and a half, trying to get a, a minute drop right. <laughs> but now, piece of Juanito and Laura Styles, they helped me out a lot with just getting them vocals across. Because, you know, the shit is so monotone now. You want to get on the flex tape, you got to be barking and saying all this other shit, dropping bombs. But uh, peace to flex for allowing me to be on there. You know, that's an honor. Alexander Wang, someone sent me a picture of him wearing one of my hats. So it's like, to see him wearing that, he's a well-known, established New York fashion designer. You know, he went to Parsons, got his shit out of there, and then he opened a store for him right there on Mercer. Well, Mercer and, and Grand. But it's like, to see him in my hat, it's just like, that was amazing. I have... I've been his partner, Jaleel Peraza. I mean, me and him break. He's 19 years old, but the kid's a genius. We break like $60,000 every month, back and forth, you know. And I have three interns, you know, they grind, grind hard, you know. And it's like, I'm, I appreciate them, because without them, I wouldn't be doing this shit. You know, you really, like I said, you, you need a team. With anything you do, you need a team at the end of the day. Whether you want to be selfish or greedy, you have to have someone to work with, someone you can relay a message to, someone that can... Do something you can't do. You know, you need that publicist, someone or someone in that in that field. You need people to manage the emails. You need the marketing team. You need, you need everything. It's a combination to make anything out of out of life or take something from nothing to something. You need that team at the end of the day. And I suggest not working with friends. You know, it's a lot easier working with with people that like to work. You know, because there's no motion behind it. There's no headaches. You know, everybody's there for the same purpose to make some money. At the end of the day, continuing with the business and making it 
what it is, or even bigger. I mean, I'm pumping out a lot of crack now as far as collaborations. I don't, I really don't, I don't want to give the, take the cat out the bag, but you know, keep an eye out for a few more rappers. You know, a few overseas collab. You know, you might catch me in London or Paris. Might we even we might do Australia as well. <laughs> but I'm just trying to. Hit, I'm out here grinding with these hats because you know this, this is. It went from fun to a business. You know, this is this is gonna feed the kids one day. You know, as far as long as I invest the money wisely. And it's like. That's that's my life right now. Hats. And you got your Tumblr post. Might have to get that on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Was that something you put on the we might have to put we might have to put that all on the Tumblr. <laughs>